Okay. All right. Well, good evening. Welcome to our September 28th, 2023 um, West Fargo Library Board Meeting. Um, I'd like to call to order our meeting. Um, we'll do quick attendance. Um, Larry? Uh, here. And Alana? Here. And we are missing um, a few members today. So we have, and myself are here. So uh, we are here and we have met that quorum. Um, we'd like to approve the order of the agenda. I would like to move to take, well, when it, I would like to take something off the consent agenda. Do I do that now or do I do that? I do that now. I'd like to move to take off the holiday approval from the consent agenda. And would you like to move that to the regular? Yes, agenda? thank you. Yes. I'll second that. Are there any comments or questions? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, thank you, Alana. We will move that into our regular agenda item. Mm -hmm. Still looking for then the approval of the order of the agenda uh, as it sits now with the one move piece moved. I will move to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, approval of the order of the agenda passes. Next, we'll move to the consent agenda. And we are looking to approve the consent agenda with, as, as we've just approved, the removal of the one item to our regular agenda. I will move Go to move. approve. Go ahead. Second. Alana. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. All right. Consent agenda passes. Next, we will move on to our regular agenda. And I think um, just because we just talked about it or talking about moving it, well, Alana, do you want to talk about the federal holiday one that we took out of the? Yeah. Yep. So, um, and, and I've talked with Jenna about this. My concerns are that the library is closed to the public for two days. Um, I, I understand that it's a federal holiday. I personally went and researched it today and, um, there's, it's the federally, the uh, o, OMB, I can't think of what, if that's what it is, but they said most employees would get the Friday prior if it falls on a Saturday, any holiday that it would be the Friday prior. Um, then I just did a quick Google search of libraries. I can say locally that one library for sure in our community is closed both days, but it's kind of sporadic across the country about if they're closed two days or one day. Um, and I I just want to make sure that we're serving the public the best way we can. So that's why I took it off the agenda and I would like for the board to discuss. And I think, yes, thank you for doing that. Um, I think... Thinking about the library um, and being open as much as possible so that the community can access it, do we write an amendment um, either into policy or into this recommendation that um, that we follow the federal holidays while I think what was I thinking? Um, if it's if it's on a work day, like I think we have to make something where because we're open on Saturdays. Like a lot of times when we write these things that it should be closed a Friday prior, it's when places are closed on the Saturday or Sunday. And so could we just make an amendment around that um that it would be closed on that federal holiday? Um if if we're open during that day and if yeah. we're something like that, I don't know how to word it better. And just just to review for the the public, the um, just to make sure we have all of our bases covered. When we first approved the holiday closures at the end of last year, I believe it was we appro approved that Friday would be the observed day off. Um, so that is what we're discussing as a board now. Um, I did I looked at banks too, even though I know we're not a bank, but um, banks are observing only one day of the holiday. I shouldn't say that the one bank I looked at was doing that. So um, I don't know if we need further guard guidance from HR before we amend it if the board approves that. And Jenna, I'm going to ask a question and that's where I think we might need to maybe talk to HR. So do we, we follow along with the federal holidays that the city has approved? 
Yeah. So when you adopted the city employee handbook in um, 2020, October of 2020, you approved uh, or you accepted this policy. I'll share it on my screen here. Um, here's the page about holiday leave in the employee handbook. So here's the list of um, observed paid holidays for city staff members. So New Year's, President's Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve Day, and Christmas Day. I'm now going to scroll down to the next page. You'll see that there are um, two sections here, though, on this page where the police do something slightly different because they're a 24-7, 365 service. And same with the fighter. Um, so this is how they're handling their holiday um, policies. We currently fall under all other departments in this portion of the policy. So it says, um, whenever one of the above listed holidays should fall on a Saturday, the preceding Friday shall be observed as the official holiday. And whenever any of the holidays should fall on a Sunday, the succeeding Monday shall be observed as the official holiday. Um, so what has happened then, because this was adopted by the board is Friday citywide in this instance is the official holiday. But of course um, we can't be open on a federal holiday either. So right. yeah. it's, it's kind of put us in this interesting position. Uh, as your director, I would say that um, I think we should probably add a paragraph, you know, to the manual, um, just like the fire and the police have done since we are open on Saturdays and Sundays, um, Sundays at least during the school year. Yeah, I would be in full support of that if we could model it after the, the police and the fire department somehow, some way. I do want, and if that's do you anticipate that part taking um, time with HR to do that? Yeah, I think we yeah. would want to have it written and I would want to bring it to you for approval in case that uh, there were any other points that you wanted to discuss. So I don't, we won't have time maybe for this next one unless you wanted to fit in another meeting before the holiday. Um, but it's been, Communications can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that it's been advertised um, as being closed for the entire year already anyway. Yeah, I don't think we can go back on what we've already approved and communicated, but I do think then we can move forward with the future calendar items. Right. Which brings me just to one last piece that we have worked on within the Fargo Public District, School District, is that, you know, the list that the the city has does not cover all federal holidays. It does not cover Juneteenth and it does not cover Columbus Day. And um, and I think that the work with H, I'd like to propose somehow some that we work with HR to really could, can we recognize all federal holidays? Because we, I, the federal holidays that are listed by the city are not all encompassing of what federally has been listed. So um, we're missing. I, I just want to interject that I think Columbus Day is Indigenous Peoples Day now, just to make sure we're stating that correctly. You're correct. I am, but I am on the Department of Commerce, and they do list it currently as Columbus Day. But I think we recognize it as Indig Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you for that correction. So I would like to um, put out there that I'd I'd really push for. Um, for equity purposes, looking at what is recognized by the all by the federal, uh, including all of them, and not just select few, but that is up to the city and the HR department. Do you need an action on this, Jenna? Um, I think you could have a motion um, instructing me to work with HR to draft uh, um, a paragraph amendment to the employee handbook. And then I will get that to you for the next meeting. Sorry, Larry, did you have any comments? You? No. No. Okay. Okay. I will make a motion to direct um, our Jenna to work with HR for amended paragraph in this handbook. 
I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any additional comments or questions? Can I ask a question about that? Yeah. Um, would you want, uh, you just had some discussion about some additional holidays. Would you want me to work with HR on that as well? And does that meet your um, second as well? Yes. Yes, please. So we have a motion and a second, um, including the additional federal holidays to potentially be recognized. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, uh, motion passes. Uh, Alana, thanks for bringing that up. I think that was a great discussion. Next on our agenda item, we have approval of staffing plan and hiring of two full-time library assistants. I'll move to approve that. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Most, motion passes. Next, we have approval of the 24 final budget, and it is also an action item. I'll move to approve that. I'd let, I'll second it, but I would like to hear the presentation and before we vote on it. We have a motion and a second, and then Jenna, do you wanna go through um, some information on this, please? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so, I'm gonna back up just a smidge um, and take a look at the, the staffing plan a little bit because that's gonna show where some of these changes are occurring in the budget. Um, are you seeing the 2024 staffing request up on your screen? Yes. Okay. Is it? Is it giant for everybody or just for me? Because I'm on a phone. Like I can't see the whole screen. It must be you. Oh, if I turn it. Okay. I can't read it, but I can see it now. And and I know we've talked about this too yep. already, Alana. But um, so in brief, um, since this has already been approved, the, the goals of the change to the staffing plan is a slight revision from the plan that was presented um, to you over the summer. So very similar. Um, some of the changes were previously it had been proposed to change our part-time uh, assistant positions to a clerk position and drop that pay grade down a little bit. My proposal is to, to keep it the same. So the part-time and the full-time assistants would have the same expectations. They're our primary point of service in the library. Um, and so we need to have staff trained um, to deal with all of the questions that walk up to that desk. And um, yeah. So the recommendation was to create two full-time library assistant positions. We currently have three budgeted but vacant part-time library assistant positions. So I'm proposing that we would eliminate those three. Um, the four part-time library assistants that we currently have, those positions would remain. And then we would be adding these two full-time positions. These positions would be funded for this year, 2023, with unspent funds from our permanent employees and part-time um, salary lines. So lines 110 and 114. Um, and then for the next year, 2024, you had previously approved adding a full-time outreach services coordinator. That doesn't quite fit the budget. And so I would like to delay hiring that position until the summer to make everything work. So that will be a seasonal position and then adding the two full-time library assistants to ensure that we have adequate staffing for our primary service point. This will also give us a lot more flexibility when we have staff who are sick or need to trade a shift um, with somebody else to make sure that we don't have um, our managers 
pulling an 11 hour day, which I can tell you has happened um, multiple times <laughs> within the last couple of weeks. Um, and those are salaried staff, so we're not paying them overtime, but it's not fair and we're burning people out. So we need to get these filled as soon as possible. So this is our current organizational chart. And you can see we have the seven part-time positions budgeted for, but three of those are currently sitting vacant. And then we would move to this chart. Um, this is a typo here that's supposed to be part-time. So this outreach services coordinator would change to a full-time position, but seasonal. We would be adding the two full-time library assistants and we would retain our four part-time library assistants. This ensures that nobody is losing their job. No jobs are being eliminated. We're retaining all of our staff and adding increased flexibility for sick time, vacations, and um, being able to swap out a shift to meet your scheduling needs. I know that you looked at this already, but um, just showing a little bit about what the change is going to be for our FTE currently from 17.6 um, and we'll be going up to 18.85 once we are fully staffed with that um, outreach services coordinator in the summer. So that we won't hit that level until midway through the year. Financial impact of this is um, with if we didn't hire anybody and we kept the vacancies that we have right now, we would anticipate that um, we would be underspent in permanent salaries by about $130,000 and part-time salaries by about $50,000 at the end of the year. So we have plenty of room in the budget there to fill those positions immediately. And then for fiscal year 24, our permanent salaries are gonna go up um, a little over 15% and the part-time salaries are gonna go down. So this is gonna be a slight increase from fiscal year 23 to 2024 as anticipated, um, you know, when you're adding roles, but um, we're still remaining really close to what the board had looked at for um, numbers in your draft budget for what was approved. I'm gonna pull up our budget draft sheet again now. Um, is this big enough so that you can read any of those numbers or should I zoom in a little? Thank you. Yeah, if you could zoom in just a little. Yeah. So um, this budget sheet looks very, very similar to the one that you looked at as your draft this summer. The changes are highlighted. So in blue, once we corrected some of the numbers for staffing changes, uh, some of our staff moved to different roles after the, num the data was input into the finance software for the budget drafts. And when we corrected that with what reality is right now and um, the positions that we plan to add, that's what these blue numbers are reflecting. Our unknowns are in yellow here, and this is going to be social security, retirement, and health insurance. We have to budget for all of our benefits eligible staff to get full family health insurance benefits. Um, but as you can imagine, that's not always reality of what happens. So those numbers um, can change a little bit. And I have a question about the blue numbers. Yes. That, so that's what we are approving, is that? Yes, I would like you to approve so that is, this third col final column. And that's what the city commission will be provided at their final meeting on October 2nd or whatever their day is? Yes, following this okay. meeting, what you approve, I will then send on to the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. 
We've also highlighted in kind of this salmon color here, a few lines that we felt um, we could decrease if necessary, if we were gonna end up getting too close um, to those salary lines or if there was a different need later in the year. Um, with furniture, we felt that that was something we could go to our friends to ask if there was a big need that hadn't been budgeted for to try to save a little money there. I like to operate within a budget and come in under if at all possible. Um, I don't want to deficit spend. I I'm, hope to never have to bring you a budget where we're deficit spending. Perhaps a little additional information would be this column here that says 2024 city draft. This is what was printed in the city's um, budget document that went out and was shared publicly. This is what they looked at at their last meeting. But the data that was input for the salaries was reflective of our staffing levels in April. And we've had staff members leave. And again, we've had some position changes since then. So that data was never updated over the course of the summer and fall. That's why there's such a big difference between these two numbers here. But again, I will forward on what you approve tonight to the city. Are there questions or comments? You'll be shocked to know I have a question. Um, so it's on a phone, so I can't read it. So I, as I understand it, the city commission cannot increase anybody's budget and ours has changed but has the overall budget number increased from what we originally proposed so we're staying within the mills that were um, assigned to us in the preliminary budget i've had to do a little bit of shifting to make that work okay. and that's with you know those lines with the new staffing plan yes so the so just so the dollar i understand the mill part the dollars are the same as what we approved prior or have not increased line items may have but overall it has not increased i'm gonna let kirsten pop in she's been raising yeah. her hand <laughs> i have okay. so much i need to say <laughs> so um correct so the amount of revenue that we're receiving stays the same the expenses that we are operating within we have kind of shifted some priorities right with that staffing and where we're putting those that money coming from um but overall we are staying within the original amount of money that you guys had talked about back in i think july or august time is relative i think it was july um that that being said at that time when you guys approved that budget we we're estimating $31,000 coming in from the state. We're actually receiving over $40,000 from the state. So there's some a little additional funds there. Um, and so there's a little, a little bit of a squishy room in there so that we, the amount that we were quote as a surplus is lesser than the amount of surplus that we had, but we are not upside down in the budget. We're still in a good spot. I will say there's a little bit of an asterisk. So if you scroll back up, Jenna, the um, first two lines, the two that are in blue are our estimates for the just regular salaries coming in. What um, is not completely configured in here is those yellow lines where we have some unknown proposed dollars with those staffing changes. So we didn't um, or weren't able to get the estimates of their salaries with their whole inclusive benefit package. So the amount that we have in um, health insurance might be up just a little bit um, once we have that final number, as well as social security and retirement, because we're adding one more, two more, well, one more full-time plan you guys had approved before. So those numbers might flex just a little bit, um, but 
we still have a little room at the bottom in that surplus and those two identified lines in the case that we do need to make sure that our budget balances. Yes, so you'll see that previously there was, so this is the draft that you looked at, this third one here. This is what the surplus looked like, 21,337 was the estimated surplus. In the city's draft, after they changed from the 5% assumed COLA to a 4% assumed COLA, this is what, in their numbers, <laughs> our um, surplus looked like. And you can see that once we've adjusted things, that surplus has dropped down, but we're still showing a small surplus. So there's a little bit of wiggle room for some of those expenses. Thank you for that detail. Alana or Larry, do you have additional questions or comments? I'm good. Okay. We we do have a current uh, motion and se or yeah second on the table uh, with all the questions and comments. I think we have um, good information. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Uh, motion passes passes for the approval of the twenty four final budget. Thank you. Next, we have on our agenda, we have cancellation or rescheduling of our October 12th library board meeting. Um, this one, and I appreciate everyone being here that can be here. Um, we had to move our September one here late September. And so we have an October one scheduled currently for October 12th. Um, do we, can, do you all want to cancel it? Um, or is there a need to reschedule it? I'm not 100% sure where we left the Veterans Day closing. So do we need to meet sometime in October to establish that? Or are we the, the two days versus one day? Well, um, I guess as I understood the Veterans Day one, um, we're not going to change anything for this year, but that Jenna would work with HR for future dates and to amend the wording. So... Right. It wouldn't so change would anything. On Friday for, or Saturday. We're or close both. for both. That so I think we then we just need to make sure that that is an actual motion because the board has only approved November tenth officially, just to cover our bases. Fair enough. So I will. Do you want? Are you proposing then the rescheduling of October twelfth? We need to hear back from Jenna on that. That's up to, I'm not sure what okay. they, they need. Jenna, are you opposed to keeping October 12th on the calendar? I know it's only like two weeks away, but. So the, um, and I'm sorry that there wasn't uh, a memo attached to that. The North Dakota Library Association conference is at that same time. And so we have um, a number of staff, including myself, attending that conference. And so we would like that either moved or canceled? I would move to move the October meeting from the 12th to the 19th of October. Alana, does that move? Because that is the NDCEL conference dates. Do, oh. Would that date work for you with kids and uh, stuff? Yeah, I think so. We might have to do it via Zoom again, but I just quick looked at my calendar and I would second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 What's, all, ND, what's NDCEL? Yeah, so there's big state education conferences ah. that Thursday, Friday. Most districts have the two days off that Thursday, Friday um, with no kids. So people, the intention is that teachers can travel to Bismarck to go. Um, so, um, but I think, yeah, if, and I would, um, if we could, Jenna, I don't think it needs to be in the action item, but if we could do it via Zoom, I have company coming into town too. Um, so that would be great. Would you like that meeting at five or 5.30 or a different time? Five worked, for me. Yeah, five worked fine for me. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Five o'clock on Zoom on the 19th. Okay. Thank you. Let's see, I'm gonna get my agenda back up. 
Um, next, we have our Summer Boost and Little Red Reading Bus 23 Impact Report. I'm going to try to share my screen here. Um, let's see. Are we seeing the Summer Boost Impact Report slide? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm seeing it, yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Ellen Rosso, Communication Specialist for the Library. And today we're just going to talk a little bit about all of the awesome stuff we did this summer. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> uh, this year's Summer Boost theme was All Together Now. All of our events and activities celebrated community, togetherness, and lending a helping hand. I just wanted to start off by saying that the West Fargo Public Library team truly embodied this theme this summer. Uh, it was another summer of challenges and wins for the library. As you know, we saw some challenges in our staffing. We also had to cut back on some of our planned events and visit a few less parks than we had in the past. Uh, we were also navigating hiring another director that, you, as you know, um, and for many things, it was all hands on deck, but everyone on the team was a very important cog in the machine and we had another great summer because of that. First, let's talk about our reading challenge. Uh, we hosted that on Beanstack, the app again this year. We had milestones and prizes for all ages. Uh, last year, we heard some suggestions from parents of uh, kids ages zero to five. And so we modified our challenge a little bit to have a bingo style activity challenge for them. All the other ages followed the usual format of reading um, certain amount of hours and then getting prizes. Our biggest age groups of participants this year were six to 11, the elementary school grades, which is awesome. And then also adults actually. In total, we had 705 readers read more than 11,000 hours this summer, 181 people uh, fully completed this year's challenge, which was a huge jump from last year where we only had a handful of completions. We also saw this summer that although we had less people sign up, uh, nearly 80% of those who signed up actually actively participated. In the past, we may have had more people sign up, but then they didn't actually follow through. So that was pretty awesome to see a lot of people actually finishing and following through. Um, for this year's summer programming, we included a mix of in-library programs and events out in the community through the Little Red Reading Bus, as you know. I just want to give another huge shout out to our youth services team in particular. Um, both youth services manager, Lauren Nephew, and our children's services librarian, Sarah Davis, had Im incredibly busy summers, more than ever before. Um, they both shared the load of driving the bus out to our six stops. And they also hosted three, sometimes four story time sessions each week. That's in addition to the dozens of other events we were having and they helped fill in at the service desk. So their team was hustling. Um, they also didn't have their program assistant all summer long and that was at no fault of their own. We just really couldn't fill that position, but they still really knocked it out of the park. So kudos to them. Uh, speaking of the Little Red Reading Bus, despite making fewer stops this year, we did see increases in average attendance per stop and average circulation per stop. We had an average of 42 visitors at each of our stops, and they checked out about 35 books each time. So despite uh, challenges, we still had another amazing um, year for the Little Red Reading Bus. We also confirmed again this year that people do love to come to events at the library building. Uh, our attendance at in-library events increased by almost a thousand people this year. Some of our top events uh, were our kickoff party, model trains, the story times. Uh, we had Stage West come out and do a performance of Winnie the Pooh. We had lots of people at our family movies and then also our senior movie screenings. We also had overwhelming interest in a flower pollinator class for kids and our STEM week, which is always a hit. On multiple occasions this summer, we did have to cap attendance for events or turn people away due to our spatial constraints though. Um, as we look towards the future, we know that outreach is important, but this summer really showed that people will come to the library and they want to come to the library and we really need a facility that can serve them. 
I will end with just here are some quotes from some people who filled out our survey at the end of the year. Um, the one that really stuck out to me is the one in the middle there. My kids learn and read because of you. Thank you so much for the events, programs, activities from the bus to learn, books, and the Red Reading Bus. So much learned and value provided. We have the best library and best staff. Thank you. That really warmed my heart. <laughs> and that is all I have. Um, I'm available for any questions about the summer. It's amazing the work that is done in such a small and confined mm -hmm. space. Yes. Ellen, thank you for this presentation, but for all the work that you've done to to help with this too. It's a, it is amazing. It's amazing. Did I mention um, inadequate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Yes, thank you guys. Okay. Next, we'll move on to our director's report. Yeah, let me share my screen again. So thank you. <laughs> First um, board meeting that we had a court and we're able to get some business done. Um, I have now worked here officially for one month and it has been delightful. This feels like a really good fit. The staff are fantastic. And um, as you know by Ellen's report, the community really loves the library and sees the library as impactful and adding value to their lives here in West Fargo. Some quotes from our patrons um, that we've received recently. Uh, they really like some of the changes to the layout of the library, making it feel spacious. Uh, our board member Shorts just noted that it is a confined space and certainly we do run out of room for our events sometimes. And yet <laughs> um, we seem to be doing well and making the most of what we've got um, at the moment. And um, beyond just what we do within our building, um, this next patron said that they really appreciate how we bring books out into the community where folks are at. Um, they moved to West Fargo about a year ago and are surprised with all the services that we provide. And they thank us for the good work that we do. Happy to note that um, our youth services program assistant position has been filled. August Speakers has been um, working with us for a, a little under a month. He started um, not terribly long after I did and has been a great fit and brings such joy um, to the programs that he's been working on. Uh, as we talked about in the staffing proposal, uh, we're still lacking appropriate levels of staffing in that. I wanna thank you for approving that new staffing plan. I met with HR this afternoon from the city and we will be posting the open positions immediately so we can get those filled as soon as possible. And look forward to doing that. Um, our programming staff have been filling in at the desk and while um, the amount of time that they're filling in at the desk has not been ideal, um, they've also taken that as an opportunity to be really informed about the programs that they're planning and taking note of what our patrons are interested in, what conversations are happening in the library, um, what's being checked out. So that time is well spent and um, we will plan to continue to have them working some hours at the service desk to remain in touch with what's happening in the community, what people are talking about, what they're interested in. Some usage trends from our library. I think um, the amount of electronic item circulation that we're seeing is incredible. Um, and it seems to just keep growing. We've had some internal conversations about um, maybe moving some of our budget dollars around a little bit to make sure that um, we have enough support in the electronic item budget lines for those materials because they're just so popular. It is a real benefit to be a part of the consortium in North Dakota so that our customers have access to um, all of those items as well that we share. 
library card signups are still meeting pre-pandemic levels, which I think is fantastic. And our meeting room usage is still um, increasing. Back up in August, it was down for the summer months a little bit. Um, I think one of the real points of pride for the West Fargo Library are our story times. Sarah and August um, that do those story times do a phenomenal job. Um, early in my career, I was a children's librarian, and I can tell you that you do not draw huge audiences and participation like they do unless you're providing a very quality, engaging program for both the kids in attendance and um, their caregivers that are coming with them. So I really want to give a lot of kudos to our youth services staff for the incredible job that they have been doing um, this week at our baby story time, we had over 70 people, littles and grownups together that were attending. Um, and that's just phenomenal. And they have such a great time. It would be lovely somewhere down the road to have um, a different space to hold that in because um, as parents know, toddlers do like to take off and run now and then. And so... Um, having an enclosed space instead of just the big open children's area that we're using currently would be great. So at the last point here, we are truly busting at the seams. Accurate, we are. <laughs> and that's just indicative of the growth of young families in West Fargo as well, and the desire that those families have for early literacy programs. One Book, One Community uh, started up on September 1st, we do have a Beanstack challenge that is currently live. Beanstack is our virtual reading challenge platform. So I would encourage everyone to sign up for that. And we have technology tutoring happening and reference services by appointment as well. Again, with outreach and bringing library services out into the community, as the patron um, noted in their comments to us, um, it's really important for us to be able to bring the library to where people are at. And so we've added a fifth daycare to our book delivery. And the Y daycare children have been visiting the library as well. They are in the same building and uh, it's been delightful to have them come through. Some upcoming events are Teen Tober events in October. We'll have DIY terrariums, edible haunted houses, the Hocus Pocus movie and decorating some pumpkins. Those should be a blast. STEM Saturday and Fast Saturdays, Fast is first and second and third graders, um, programs aimed at that early elementary age are starting up in October. There's a warning signs of Alzheimer's class coming up and beginning knitting as well. Book sale on October 14th and 15th during library hours. And uh, as noted earlier, One Book, One Community is going on right now. There's a variety of events around the Fargo, Moorhead, and West Fargo area that we are partnered with. The main author talk will be at Concordia on the 19th, and that is Natalie Warren. Um, I did also wanna end with a few other notes. Um, when I said that we are busting at the seams, we recently had a fall craft event in one of our meeting rooms upstairs and there were so many people, we had to open a second room. Um, this becomes a challenge for our staff having to then go out in the hallway and run over to the second room to help people and then um, come back. So look forward to the future, having a bigger space available for that someday. And I also wanted to give special thanks to Kirsten who did such a phenomenal job as our interim director. And I have been asking her 1 million questions a day. Um, she really 
held my hand through working through the budget issues um, and taking a look at how to revise that, where to find the files, who to talk to. She's done a phenomenal job and I'm so glad to be working with her. Ellen, our communication specialist, has also been fantastic um, having templates for all of these presentations for our, our board meetings um, and just the broad variety of communications that she helps with. She's been a really valuable asset as well. Any questions? Thanks, Jenna. That was a great report. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any questions or other comments? All right, we have come to the end of our agenda. I'm waiting for Alana or Larry. They always do it. If we, we haven't approved the closing of vet, on Veterans Day. There was We approved a motion for her to contact somebody, but we didn't approve closing on Veterans Day. So that's still an open item. I'm right. happy to move to do it, to discuss it, but I'm going to vote against it. So if we need to get a motion on the table, I will do so. I, I move that. Well, I don't want to make the motion. Somebody else should make the motion. I can do it. I'll make a motion to approve um, Veterans Day as a closed day as well. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those in favor, all those... Uh, that sorry, the disagree. Opposed. opposed. Yes. Yeah, opposed. Oh my God. All those opposed, same I, sign. Okay. I'm opposed. Uh, okay. Motion passes with a vote of two to one. I move to close the meeting. I'll second that motion. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Jenna, you're you're one meeting in here. Nice Thanks work. For it. <laughs> October 19th at 5. October 19th at 5. Got Perfect. It. Thank you all. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.